Hello and welcome. I'm Aruba. Thank you for watching. So in our last mini tutorial, we talked about how to use Dwarf Fortress and uh, use QuickFort to help build out and designate areas very quickly. And in this episode or this video, I'm going to show you how to create the files that QuickFort uses in order to do those automatic commands. So I'm going to open up one of my common commands or in fact, let's use, how about we go with Noble Bedrooms. So what you're going to see is I have three tabs to a Microsoft Excel worksheet and I've spaced it so that they're perfectly symmetrical so that I can clearly see it similar to the way it would appear in game. I've got dig, build, and query. These are three of the four possible commands you can use within QuickFort. Dig, naturally, is going to dig out a designated area. That's really all that it does is dig. So what you do is in order for QuickFort to know that it is a digging template, it has to start off with the topmost leftmost cell saying pound dig and that's it. It doesn't have to have this start there. It just have to say, it has to say pound dig. Now if you want to tell the game that there is a starting point here at 1010, 1, this would be 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5, 6, 6, 7, 7, 8, 8, 9, 9, 10, 10. So I'm telling it that the cursor will start at 1010 so that it's going to go around in this square in the game. Now I could just not put the start 1010 and then it's going to start in the top leftmost corner. But depending on the type of design you're making, you might want it to start in the middle or just start anywhere. So I've told the game that the cursor starts here and these D's represent squares that I want it to dig out. If there's a square that's blank, it's going to leave it blank in the game. These pound symbols let the game, let QuickFort know that this is the end of the blueprint. You don't have to have these. It would work just fine without them, but I like to have them in there so that I can clearly see it and it helps me to spatially kind of determine what I'm looking at. Now, if you want, you can add other things in, like, um, for instance, if you want to do a border here so you can clearly see the rooms you're digging, you can do that just fine. That's a formatting issue, so it's not going to actually affect QuickFort at all. It just helps you to visually see what you're looking at. Now, if we go to the Build screen, I've done that, so I can see these are the rooms that I'm digging out. And again, the Build screen requires you to use Pound Build. I've also told it that it starts at 1010, which is this central center square. And I've also told it that, and this is just a description for the tooltip, it requires eight orders of noble bedroom set and two orders of dining set. This is just so that when I'm playing the game, I don't forget. If I, if I want to designate this out, I'm going to have to have eight orders of noble bedrooms and two orders of dining rooms, and then I've got all the materials that I need. Now again, I am playing Masterwork Dwarf Fortress, so you might be wondering what is the noble bedroom set. Well, that is specific to the version of the game that I'm playing. But what this does is now, this tells the QuickFort software here that I'm going to build these items. This is the same key that you would use in Dwarf Fortress. So a B is a bed. C is a coffer. Or, um, no, it's not a coffer, it's a chair. T is a table. R is a weapon rack. Um, a is an armor stand. F is a cabinet. H is a coffer. D is a door. And so the easiest way to, to make this page, I find, is to create a copy. So we'll copy this tab. Oops. We want to move or create copy, move to end, create copy. And then we can rename it. We can name it build, for instance. And then you can use this to edit. And you've got it, and it'll, it'll be easy to, to kind of fill in the room after the fact. Doing this does take some time, but once you've done it one time, you never have to do it again, whereas if you play Dwarf Fortress continu continuously and you have to constantly rebuild your fort, it's better to do it one time on Excel than it is to do it a thousand times in Dwarf Fortress. Finally, we have the query. And what this does is, again, I need to put pound query, and I'm telling it to start at 1010. Um, these Ds let the game know that... Um, I'm disabling, I, I'm, I'm trying to remember off the top of my head here, I think that that disables um, pets from being allowed to walk through these doors. And then R plus, R plus, R plus is basically saying, 
turn this item, whatever is in this square, into a room and make it as big as it can be. That's what the plus does. So if I go back to build, I can see that, for instance, we've got a bed, a chair, and a table. So when I do this query, it's automatically going through each of these rooms and turning it into a bedroom, a dining room, and an office. So this is my noble rooms layout. So if I want to create four noble rooms, they do overlap. They're not, um, they're not split off, which I do have, I think, one for nobles that were split off, but I stopped doing that a while back. What else did I have? Well, here's another one I've done for, for a different type of bedroom, smaller. And we can also look at the template for, say, the dining room. So this just shows I've created a, a large dining room area, and then I've built out the chairs and tables. And then I've got a dig phase two for when I want to expand it out. And essentially, you're able to just pre-plan what you want to build in Dwarf Fortress. So um, now there's a lot of documentation in the Quick Fort folder. If you have any questions, feel free to comment down below or uh, read through the documentation. But this is an incredibly useful tool. I would recommend that you use it. And uh, if you found this helpful, please do subscribe. I, I have a lot of information that I think will benefit you if you continue to listen. So. Um, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode.